What's up guys, Hey King here bringing you a Resident Evil discussion video related to, of course, Resident Evil 4 Remake. So guys, the remake has finally been officially confirmed and despite there being many, well, few articles that pretty much revealed its existence along with leaks and people trying to act like it doesn't exist. If it's not officially announced, it doesn't exist. Yeah, it doesn't exist, despite the fact that you've got tons of leaks and reports saying that it's clearly stating that it does. You know, there's a difference between official and revealing it, so, you know. But, whatever, guys, it's revealed, it's official now, everyone knows it's happening, and it's coming out early next year, so, yay! Time to get excited, right? You know, if you're a horror fan and a Resident Evil fan, and I am both, so... Major win for me, and for us who are into that genre, and that franchise, but yeah, before I start guys, remember to like and subscribe for this video, please. Uh, click down below, comment down below, please, as usual, if you can. And yeah, we're going to be talking about everything that will be cut and changed, potentially, in the uh, remake. Because rest assured, my fellow fans, things will be cut. Things will be changed. RE2 and RE3 remakes are great examples of that. And again, before I go into this, I like to remind you that uh, Division 1 apparently is, well, most likely is, if we're going to go by the report that we got from IGN, I think last year, that they are developing the remake after they rebooted the project and took it over from M2, who were going to do a fateful remake, but then Capcom were a bit pissy about it and were like, nah, nah, we want, we want a reimagining of the story. And it's pretty much confirmed it is a reimagining of the story. Which is kind of a shame, really. I mean, on one hand, I really, I really wanted uh, this to sort of... I, I kind of wanted them to sort of uh, delete the original story for RE4 and maybe do a new version. Obviously, keep certain things intact, like Ashley getting kidnapped and that maybe. But I don't know, maybe replace Sadler with, with Spencer or something. Or maybe throw some Spencer in there for a worse. I don't know. I'm a fanboy trying to talk a lot of crap because I'm, I'm not really, a, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the original story of RE4. But this remake has a chance to fix things, to fix a lot of the writing mistakes. I mean, for a script that was written in two weeks, there was a lot of dumb stuff in that in that game. Um, you know, as a game it's great, but story-wise it's absolutely terrible. Like, it makes no sense. It really makes no sense. And we're going to go through this you know, bit by bit in terms of levels and areas and figure out what's going to get cut, what will like most likely, you know, thinking about it logically in terms of, you know, pacing wise and whether it fits the tone they're trying to go with this game and of course what could be changed around or expanded, etc, etc and what some of the story changes will likely be or what they could do to improve the actual story and how they can expand upon it. So, if you're up for that, this is going to be a long video guys by the way, so if you're up for that, let's go right into it then. Okay, so first up we have uh, the village area. Uh, we start. Uh, I had to look for. A, I, had to, I had to try and find uh, something that listed all the areas. I, I think I found something that's close to it. Maybe not all of it, but uh, it's as good as I could get. So I'm going to read through this one by one. So the first area obviously is where you start at the old house where you meet the first Ganado. Well, pro by the way, shout out to the whoever wherever I took this list from. You know. Th thanks for it guys because uh, you helped me out a lot here with this but yeah where you start the air okay so this is the opening of the game essentially you know Leon comes in he's with the two cops and he wanders off and he meet, you know he runs into the first house where he meets the first Ganado bit of uh, some miscommunication and an attack and then yeah you put your first Ganado down the cops get ambushed they get attacked some firing blah 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 uh, going over the bridge the bridge collapses Leon's trapped oh no so um yeah, I imagine that's the, from the trailer we can see that that area is, for the most part, intact. That opening is intact. I mean, I think that original opening with Leon just in the back seat of the car is kind of iconic. So they're obviously going to keep that, and we're obviously going to get an expansion of what with a flashback to the White House and figuring out what the uh, mission is. Uh, personally, I was kind of hoping that uh, they would change it up a bit and have Krauser, you know, instead of him having died in, in a helicopter crash randomly and, and introducing him randomly in the story, he would be introduced early on and be Leon's partner for this mission and then they get separated. This way, you you know, you can build uh, up this sort of trust with, uh, with with Leon and Krauser only to throw the twist in and be like, no, he's, he's the traitor, you know. 
but it doesn't seem like they're going with that route, which is a bloody shame, honestly, because that would have been a good way to fit Krauser in there. But, you know, moving on, um, that obviously first area of the game is intact. It's going to be in there. I imagine maybe they're going to do something like how they did with uh, RE Village, where you, you know, you, you sort of starve with the you know, with, uh, sunrise, you know, it's dark, it's, you've got you that bluish tint. And then as you, as you go through that first area, and as you get to a certain point, it opens up to the village, and then it's like daytime, like the sun is rising, and it's like, well, that's how we start the game. So very similar to what they did with RE Village, maybe, I'm thinking. Uh, the uh, main village area, obviously, from the trailer, again, we can see it's intact, it's in there, it's kept in. Uh, again, iconic moment, it's one of the best openings to a Resident Evil game, I think. You know, you go in, you into the village, you get attacked, you're fighting everyone off, you've got the Chainsaw Maniac, aka Dr. Salvador, being introduced and coming in, trying to take your head off, uh, and then the bell rings. Everyone drops their weapons, and the Ganados wander off, and you get one of them muttering, Lord Sadler, and then boom. And, of course, the iconic line, Where's everyone going? Bingo. <laughs> uh, which might not be in there. I mean, but I mean, personally, I'm kind of hoping they keep some of the cheesy lines, and at, at the other times, I'm hoping they change a few, you know, a few certain lines. But the bingo and the big cheese, and definitely my favorite one: your right hand comes off. I, I, I want those need to be kept in there for Christ's sake. But yeah, the main area I think is going to be kept in. I don't think there's going to be much of a change unless maybe they change it up to where they introduce Luis a bit earlier and they actually have him save Leon in the main village area perhaps and they're escaping or Leon gets knocked the hell out and he gets captured and we, we, we remove that entire part where you're pretty much trying, you know, where you're pretty much going down and you end up finding Lewis, and you meet him and then you confront Amanda's and then you get captured and you start off. So that entire area could potentially get, because you have to think about this from a budget reason and from a pacing reason as well, like what is going to be kept and what's going to be cut. And I don't know, I feel like they could just easily kill two birds with one stone by just having Leon get captured in that main village area. You know, you're trying to survive, you're trying to survive the onslaught and then eventually you survive long enough to trigger the cutscene and then you're captured. You know, you know maybe Mendes himself enters the, the main village area, boom, 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 you know, he's introduced as a stalker enemy and he knock, you know, he beats the crap out of you, he knocks you out and then the next thing you know, you're, you're opening, the game opens up into the next area where you meet with Lewis and you're like, who is this guy, what's going on? And he breaks you free, you get tagged, you escape and you're pretty much in that entire area with the, uh, the, the valley basically where you get the, where you meet the merchant and you get, you know, you get the sniper rifle. So, big potential they might do that. Maybe not, you know, because again, maybe they want to keep most of the areas in the village intact. Which, to be honest, I think they should. I think the village is the best part of the game. And if anything needs to be changed around in terms of pacing, it's definitely the castle and the island. But I can see them taking elements, taking bits of the village out, you know, just sort of trying to get to the point very, very, very fast. Because people, you know, the majority of people will have played this game already. They'll know everything, they'll know the area. So it's like, what can we do to just get the plot going a bit quicker, right? So that that could be one of the areas definitely going, you know, that whole road that you take just to get to Lewis and get into the old house and that. So, you know, I'm thinking start off in the valley. You meet Lewis, you meet you, you meet the chief early on, and you get the you meet the stranger, you know the the merchant, and you get you know you get the whole concept introduced to the uh, weapon upgrades, if you will. So you get the sniper rifle, you start taking a few enemies out from the valley, and you go on, you find the two pieces missing key pieces, you combine it, you open the door. Again, that might be changed around a bit, maybe maybe they'll go for something a bit more realistic, maybe not, and you move on. And eventually, I'm trying to remember where, where this goes, eventually it, it leads you back to the main village area, if I remember correctly, you know, if you give the escape of Boulder as well. And then eventually you get to the main, uh, you get to the main village area and then you have to go through the farm. The farm, 100% it's being kept, I mean, again, seeing the wildlife, seeing the cows, the chickens, and not to mention the corpses that you find in there, so definitely that area, that farmhouse area is going to be kept. Uh, there's also that part in the farmhouse where you need Ashley to sort of climb overboard, so, and that leads you to the rest of the map, but yeah, I think that entire part is going to be kept in. Uh, eventually, you move on, I think, from there, I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to remember what happens after that, from the because if I remember correctly, you, you, you get you get a key, right? You get a key. Or oh, is the farm area afterwards? I'm trying to remember if the farm area actually leads you to the old house, potentially. Because I think you do find a key, perhaps, in... I think you find the key in the valley area, which you used to open. 
the lock in it but uh i'm assuming the farmhouse you know you 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 go to the farmhouse area first and then you get back to the main village again it's been a long actually i, played, I think i played the game last year maybe the year before that but um, <laughs> i'm having a hard time remembering all the areas but either way you you end up taking you end up going through the uh, main what is a building church whatever that is or what the uh, what looks like the front for a church and then you end up going through the uh, underground area where you meet the merchant for a second time and that leads you to the church area this is the point where you discover this is what ashley's kept now obviously from the trailer we can see that uh, ashley's trying to run away and escape so i'm thinking that we are going to get like a mini campaign with ashley or, or an alternative opening with ashley where we see what's happening with her and she's trying to escape and uh, maybe the game's going to sort of introduce us to a more tough Ashley. You know, she manages to break free, she manages to escape, but then she ends up getting caught regardless. She loses the jacket and then she gets captured and she gets thrown into the church. So, yeah, all roads lead to the church in the end. You get to the church, you can't open it because you need the key. At this point, it turns into another fetch quest because you need that key, that insignia to open the church door. Maybe it'll be different, maybe it'll actually be a key, but uh, either way, you know, moving on, we have to go to the next area. So yeah, you, you move on from the church area. Uh, what else is going to be kept? The Chief's house, yes, definitely. Chief Mendes' house is definitely going to be kept in. I think this takes place right after you get, after you basically come from the valley. You escape the valley, you escape that whole, I think there might be an area where, where it's like, uh, what, what is it like, uh, what do you call it? Dog traps or something on the ground and you avoid that. And uh, you go into the house and that's when you encounter Mendes and depending on what you do next you can either follow Mendes into his bedroom where you get your first glimpse of Ada or you don't and you just continue moving on. But I'm, I'm assuming Mendes is actually going to be like uh, the stalker enemy for this game so he's, he's probably going to uh, fight you like, and he's going to start chasing you through this house. It's a very likely they're going to make this house a bit more bigger sort of to give you that opportunity to avoid Mendes and you have to escape and you have to try and get outside uh, I'm thinking the encounters with Dr. Salvador will be reduced uh, because if, if if Mendes is going to be the stalker enemy then uh, you're not you're not gonna have any need for the chainsaw maniac do you know what I mean except for maybe the opening and maybe certain other areas once twice or a few times but yeah they're gonna probably cut ease encounters down and they're gonna basically make Mendes a more figurehead in the village as well because again he's the chief of the village right like he should he should have a bigger role in the very early parts of the game you know you, know, you, you only count him like uh in his intro in the house third time if you just you know which is an optional cutscene if you go for it and then you don't see him again until the boss fight so you know getting this sort of big large presence of him uh, motivated by trying to basically kill you because you're going around killing all these people then yeah it, it makes more sense to up his role in that department so yeah the chief's house definitely going to be in i think from the trailer again we're, we're most likely in the chief's house what we see him the, in that hallway um obviously you get to the church you, they're probably going to keep that entire part where you're jumping maybe over the boards and that uh and you get into I believe the area that's where El Giganto is housed. Now, this is the daytime, obviously, so you're not going to be encountering. Instead, you're going to be hearing him behind the um, big metal door. Maybe they'll expand that a bit more. Maybe, you know, throw in more clues like, yeah, there's something giant and big behind that door. You can't get through it. You better not go through it. And then you continue on, which leads you to sort of like the swampy kind of area, I think, uh, with, the, with the raised bridges and the dynamite or the bombs, like the trip wires. So, again, you know, going through that area, I think, I think that's an area they're definitely going to keep because uh, I'm imagining they're going to keep that entire sort of optional route where you can take a boat and you can just end up right in that area instead of going all the way around. But yeah, I think they'll keep that area for sure, which then leads to the Del Lago area of the game. And yeah, we, again, from the trailer, we've seen the lake is there, the boat is there. So I'm assuming Del Lago is in there, you know, the giant salamander. So we're definitely going to have that in there. That part's definitely kept in. Uh, which then probably ends with Leon entering the cabin and you know, he's losing his mind because he's getting that sort of feeling of I'm infected I, I can clearly see I'm infected or you know, something's going on um, And may maybe maybe if we're lucky we'll get more scenes with Leon like trying to survive Maybe they'll even throw a gameplay element in there where you have to constantly take the pills Otherwise your character's gonna go into this sort of like, you know, like getting panic attacks or whatever when the parasite's taken over so you have to go into your item in inventory and take the the pill uh, a good example of this is uh from the game um what's it called let me see if i can see it from here 
Oh god, the Ob Observer, I think, System Redux, I could be wrong. Um, it started the actor from Blade Runner, um, and in the, in the game you're basically, you're, ba you're, you're basically a cyborg, and every few minutes you have to take these pills, otherwise you start sort of losing control, your night vision and all that, and your detective mode, whatever, starts like uh, s statting and that, so maybe they'll do something like here. Um, where you have you have to take like the medication, or whatever. Obviously, uh, you won't get that medication until you meet Lewis again later on. I think where I think you get it in the uh, I believe you get it in the castle area, obviously. But that could be a gameplay mechanic implemented for later on in the game and not now, or maybe maybe it will be part of the gameplay. Don't know, but um, early on. But uh, I think I think. And I'll, and I'll explain why, I'll explain why that might be for later on, they might implement it and stuff early on, but um, yeah, you go on, you go through the cabin obviously, and then you end up, that's when you're introduced, because Leon ends up falling asleep, you know, he goes into sort of like a, he, he knocks himself out basically, you know, like, loses consciousness, and then the next time he wakes up, it's night time, and that's when all the parasites stop coming out of the heads and that during the night time, and uh, yeah, that's sort of that new form of the enemy is introduced. And then you go through that nighttime area, and then you get to the cliff side, and you go down, and you're at the uh, waterway area, and uh, you're trying to move the crates about and uh, stop the waterfall to basically go into the uh, tunnel where you can get the insignia. And at this point, the uh, secret entrance opens up, and you can go through and take the boat and go to the uh, area where the merchant is located, where yeah, you can buy a bunch of stuff. And then when you exit, that's when you end up back in the area where El Gigante is, you know, the boss arena for that and you end up uh, fighting El Gigante basically and yeah depending on whether you save the dog or not which I think might be an op I mean again from from what seeing the trailer it looks like that was a dog corpse in there or maybe it was a pig or something I mean it looked like it had hooves but it most likely was the dog I think so maybe they kill the dog off maybe you don't get that extra help it is a bit weird wouldn't it I mean uh, one of the things that kind of peeved me off about that was the fact that you can save this dog early on and then it comes to help you and then you never see the dog again you never see like what happened to it. it just it just disappears and then you get to this point in the game where you're heading to the church and you see some dogs depending on whether or not you decided to turn back you know when you wake up as Leon in the cabin and take the boat back from where you came from where you then get the cutscene where the dogs are actually introduced you wouldn't you, you'd think oh it's it's your friend the dog you know he's there to help you out but instead no it's not it's 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 these freaking infected canines and they jump you and attack you and it's like a very scary moment actually the first time if you didn't know about that other cutscene but um, yeah I can see them doing that or ma or maybe they put a twist and it's like nope you're gonna be forced to go all the way back because Capcom loves their backtracking but I think that's one of the things I, one of the um, Shortcuts they're definitely going to keep, you know, anything to sort of lessen the progression, if you will, like, or maybe if, if they give you the option of going back, you encounter Dr. Salwood, or maybe Mender's actually, like, he'll, he'll actually encounter you through the swamp uh, area instead, like, uh, if you decide to go back instead of going straight to the church and fighting El Giganto. And obviously, after El Giganto, you head back to the church. And same thing as always, you end up uh, meeting Ashley, you end up uh, rescuing her, and then that's when we meet Sadler for the, you know, officially properly, instead of Leon being knocked down and seeing him, you meet Sadler properly for the first time. And this is where one of the stupidest parts of the game comes in now. This is the part of the game where I would change certain elements of the writing of the plot, where he basically straight up tells Leon that he's infected both of you, and he can't wait for her to get home so all the madness can begin. Him basically telling his big evil plan to you it is ridiculous, and Leon and Ashley never really, I mean, yeah, they're like, oh, we're infected, shit. But it's also a case of, like, he never really tells Hunnigan uh, that, oh, by the way, we're infected, uh, you're going to have to quarantine us when we get in there, or something, or, or whatever, like, no. What should happen here is, is that Sadler keeps his mouth shut. He introduces himself, he explains, like, what he's all about. But he keeps his mouth shut about Leon and Ashley being infected. These two should not know they're infected at all, period. There should be moments, obviously, where Leon's like, what the hell is going on? But he's he's on a way. He doesn't know. And neither does Ashley, okay, at this point. Uh, and, Cap, you know, Sadler's keeping very quiet about that. You know, you maybe you'll get a few little hints from him. But overall, it should be a case of he doesn't tell them and Leon and Ashley don't find out. Because then it'll make the reveal when they are infected a lot more powerful and interesting for later on. Because it, it, imagine they don't tell to tell them, right? And then as you go, as you continue on through the village, maybe you meet up with Lewis, and then at one point, maybe in a cutscene, you know, Leon and Ashley are coughing up blood. At this point, Lewis is like, you, you, you two are infected. It's like, what are you talking about? And then he explains the what's happening and what's going on. 
and at this point both of them freak out and they realize we can't go back home because if we do we're gonna potentially infect everyone in the mainland or back in the US or the government blah 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 wherever the White House we can't go back we need to find a cure then and Lewis will be like yeah I've got an idea I've got a cure but I need to go and get it and then the next time you see Lewis he gives you the cure and this becomes a gameplay element where you have to use these pills maybe you know every say like every 10, 10 20 minutes you know if, 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 depending on the difficulty level that you're playing on say you have to take this like every 10 20 minutes maybe maybe 30 minutes you know you just go into inventory and you take the pill done but you maybe have to find more perhaps maybe you got you find, maybe these things are sort of scattered about or maybe you need specific herb items and you have to combine them to create this pill so you know you get this choice like do you want to improve your health or do you want to improve this? And if you if you don't take these pills, it's gonna make like aiming whatever a bit harder because now it's like it's like because the, the parasite is fighting Leon at this point, so you're sort of fighting against the control system at the same time, maybe. And that's just my idea of what a decent, you know, what kind of a. F it, it might not be fun for people, but it would be very interesting for some. Yeah, sorry guys, my camera cut off there. So as I was talking about the uh, the medication, so yeah, it would be a very interesting thing to throw in there, like, you know, that gameplay mechanic. But yeah, as you go through the game, again, it's very important they don't know this, but once they do find out, it's very important for their attitude to sort of develop and change over the course of the game. So you get the pills, but obviously they're only a short-term solution. When Lewis ends up getting killed, you know, extend his role a bit more and he gets killed a bit towards maybe the end of the, or just before the end of the castle area, he gets killed. And before he dies, he tells Leon, or actually if she's present, that yeah, there is there is a proper, proper cure. I tried to look for it. It's not here. It's located, uh, you know, or I know where it is. It's located on the island, you know, where Sattler's main base of military operations are. If you want to get cured, you need to go there and use the machine there. He tells you that. And now Leon and Ashley know that there's officially a cure that they can get. And instead of Ashley getting kidnapped at the end of the castle section, have Leon actually rescue her from Salazar. You beat Salazar, you've beaten everyone in the castle, etc, etc. You now have the choice. You now have the choice, or in this case, Leon has the choice of reporting it and going home and taking Ashley with him. Or they have the choice of going to the island and potentially finding a cure before it's, you know, instead of hoping that they can get a cure in the, from, from the government, they can just get the cure there instead. And, you know, Ashley makes that decision. You know, Leon will ask her, what do you want to do? Do you want to, you know, risk it, go home, get quarantined and pray that it can cure us? Or do you want to go to the island and get cured? And Ashley will be like, you know, at this point, she's developed more as a character. She's grown braver. And she makes the decision of no, let's go to the island and get the cure, no matter you know, no matter what, we either live or we die. And it's like okay, and we're going for it. So you go to the island. Ashley accompanies you, and maybe Ada, obviously Ada would probably be there helping you, and she keeps Ashley under guard, perhaps you know, throw that in there if you want. And this way, it's it it's better developed, you know, the whole oh my god, we're infected, uh, you know, it is a lot more better handled because it, com it comes as, as a shock to Leon and Ashley a bit later on, and then there's also a choice factor in it, and the cure element is developed better as well, instead of just sort of being thrown in, and then at the end you get there, and it's like, oh, here you go, you just use this machine to cure yourself, boom, done. Now, this way the writing flows better, it makes the story better, it makes it more tenseful, and, you know, it makes it develops the characters better, because Ashley as a character will be able to be develop further as well and become tougher because of the experience and she makes that choice of we're gonna go there instead of oh yeah we're just gonna go to this random place no you've you set all of the elements up and that's kind of what I think they should do that's my opinion of how they should change that personally but yeah uh, and uh, what other areas would they would they cut obviously you rescue Ashley from the church etc etc we move on uh, you go through all the dark uh, areas if you will you go through all the door thing if you will and then you get to the cabin you do that whole section with lewis and the cabin where you're protecting yourself maybe hell maybe they uh, change it up a bit and this is the point in the game where leon gives ashley a gun depending on maybe it's just an optional thing or maybe it's a gameplay thing where like if you have another handgun uh, this triggers it and it's like it is a handgun or lewis has a spare one and he gives it to her and he's like hey take this handgun this is how you point and shoot boom and this way ashley can help you out in the cabin fight as well maybe not as good but uh, for starters, you know, for a start, it's something, you know, she's sort of there killing a few enemies for you, you know, and not being completely useless, so to say, basically. Uh, I feel like that would help a lot, you know, just getting this sort of quick moment, she's handed a gun, Leon comes over and he's like, take this, take the magazine, take the magazine, do that, point, aim, shoot, 
safety off, safety on, boom, done, quick explanation, get to it, you know, don't shoot any of us, <laughs> okay, you know, ooh, don't point the gun at us, point it at them, there you go, boom, done, and again, character development, uh, gameplay element, do it, I hope it does it, I really do, I hope that's kind of what they do to spice it up a bit, so sort of just hide upstairs, you know, be a damsel in distress, ah, like, no, do something with it. So then we get to the next point of the game of the cabin where you get the choice of going through two routes. Now, if you're a completionist, you would have gone through both routes in order to get all the treasures. But um, in this, but yeah, the two routes are very different. One is basically a chase sequence where you're getting chased by El Gigante who comes back and uh, you have to get like a key from the barrel. You have to shoot it, get it, open the door. And while opening like locks on, on, on these fences to get through and using boulders to block El Gigante to give you time to get through the area, or you go through another area which is basically a horde mode area where you're just killing everyone in the in, in the area and then you have to fight like two chainsaw sisters. Uh, I see this area potentially being cut from the game because, you know, again, again, you have to look at what happened with the other remakes and how they did certain things. Uh, the RPD, for example, was pretty much the same for the most part, uh, whereas the sewers and the lab were completely different. I can see them keeping the majority of the village intact but when it comes to that choice of like do you want to go right or do you want to go left uh you know again if you're a completionist you're going to go for both areas regardless but you know if you're a first time player you know you're going to be like i'm going to go here or go here or you're going to try both just to see what happens you know load up your save etc so you die you go for the other the area but it is a bit repetitive so i think for pacing reasons maybe they'll just cut cut one area and, and keep the other and uh since we already since we already have like the chainsaw maniac already as an enemy, I can see them cutting the chainsaw sisters from from Leon's campaign specifically, and they'll just keep the El Giganto chase. Maybe hell, they may they might even make that into like a cinematic chase sequence instead. Like and I don't know, maybe, maybe they'll do something different with it. Like you saw, like that's sort of similar to the crocodile. You like you're running, but then you get these moments where you like uh, you, you have to quickly like uh, cut through the door, break through the door, and continue on. Maybe they'll do that. I don't know, but. Uh, uh, Personally, I can see them doing that. I, I pers I wouldn't want them to. I like I like those areas, getting that choice, but I can see them doing that. So, you know, cutting one of those areas out. So once you're past that area, you pretty much end up in this bigger area where you have to, you know, get the uh, eyeball to open the lock on the uh, retinal scanner door to get to go towards the castle, basically. But you have to go through the uh, control room for the trolley system and go up to the trolley to get to the barn. So I can see the. I can see them keeping the trolley system, keeping the whole Kenya area up, or or, may, or maybe again, maybe they change it up and you sort of have to travel up a mountain now instead. Maybe um, I'm trying to think how different they could do the trolley area. Maybe like uh, again, maybe it could be cinematic. You know, enemies come on top and then they jump in and then you're wrestling them. You have to knock them out, or maybe maybe they put flying creatures in finally and you have to sort of shoot out these flying creatures flying at you. Like I don't know. Again, things could be different. Things might be the same. God knows. But either way, it's going to end with a fight with Mendes in the uh, barn, basically, and you fight him, and well, maybe his mutation will be different, maybe his mutation will be similar, God knows. I think, personally, maybe they'll do it in a way where you fight his first form as he's sort of humanoid, and then as the fight goes on, it moves to the second phase where he turns into that centipede, you know, centipede creature, and then you, you break that apart, and you've got the third form where he's just sort of, like, hanging in there. So, you know, maybe they, they'll, basically they'll just make the fight a bit longer and harder, maybe? But either way, the majority of the village, I think, they'll keep intact. It's the castle and the island that I can see them changing very vastly and very differently. And yeah, we're going to move on to that next, uh, by the way. Remember to like and subscribe, guys, please. It helps. It really does. Uh, check, click the bell down below, share, comment down below. And we're still going. This video is not over. It's just like sort of the halfway point. Kind of, because there's still the island section as well. So yeah, keep keep with me, guys. Keep with me. Like I said, this is gonna be a long video. And yeah, guys, moving on, we get to the castle area. So I'm trying to remember what happens here. You get to the castle, and uh, Ashton and Leon they do the whole drawbridge thing, and then you're outside, sort of the main entrance, if you will. And. Uh, yeah, you kind of you kind of go through you kind of go through this area. The merchants there as well. You go through this area, and I believe you end up in a room 
where you have to switch two swords around like a, like a gold and a silver sword and you get introduced to these new ganado as well that sort of have the worms it's no longer like tentacles it's like worms popping out that can basically one shot kill you if you get too close to them so can i see them keeping that area maybe they'll change the entrance area up a bit perhaps but yeah i can see them keeping that because it's sort of a simple puzzle isn't it take one so that it's sort of like the em uh, emerald puzzle in the original resident evil where you just swap one for the other and one moves the clock uh the, the clock thing back and it gives you a key and the other one uh is like the piano room and it moves back and you get the uh i think uh, i think in the original it was it was one of the crests maybe i think i think and and, and the other i think in the remake in the remake it was um uh, one of the death books or the god or death masks but either way one of the where either way i think i think that room is probably going to stay maybe even be expanded so you go for the room and then you end up outside again where you've got the catapults that whole section personally i found to be very bloody annoying um depending on how the castle is designed the cat catapults are either staying or they're going uh Maybe they stay. Maybe they change it up a bit where you have to use the catapults uh, to like aim and maybe fight a bigger enemy. Maybe I don't know. Um, most likely it's going to be kept because I think it adds to the uh, I don't know the architecture of the castle. Perhaps if you want, um, it could also be removed. God knows. Um, you know, maybe you get to the castle and now those two areas are in there. Instead, you, you you're outside and as you continue walking for forward, you meet Lewis. Uh, and then maybe that's when he gives you the pills if you haven't had them already. And then he, you know, he goes off saying, okay, he needs to get more information. Or something happens that causes you all to split up and then you enter the main hall and that's when you meet Salazar perhaps. So maybe those two areas will be skipped. Again, you gotta think about the pacing, what's gonna be kept, what's gonna go. So Salazar's introduction, yeah, I'm thinking it's gonna be kept. Uh, it's a cool introduction. Uh, but I, I think at this point, they're probably gonna have, uh, what's his face, uh, the, uh, the right hand attack you maybe. I think this is also, does Ashley even get, yeah, Ashley does, I think Ashley, I remember Ashley does get kidnapped at this point. Oh no, I forgot, I forgot actually, I forgot something very important. I think, I'm trying to remember, I really am, I'm having a hard time remembering. But yeah, uh, I'm thinking I missed an area, I missed the uh, floating platforms. You know, the one where you, which is, I think it's one of the worst areas in the game. You, you and Ashley basically end up in this room. I think just before you meet Salazar actually on the balcony you end up in this room with, with like two floating platforms but you, you can't cross them because they're in the water and you've got tons of spawning enemies and you need to push Ashley on ledges and she has to go and crank the thing to get the, 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 the platforms up. There's also one early on where you have to sort of go into a room downstairs and stand on different uh, platforms, one Leon, one Ashley to raise to raise the crank I think to do the first platform and then you put, push Ashley up on the balcony to get the second. I'm thinking this area is going to be redesigned to be more simpler or it's going to be cut entirely because it was honestly in my opinion it's one of the worst areas in the game. I absolutely hate this area in the game. Uh, the amount of time the first time I played this game that I spent on that area alone was aggravating. Uh, nothing would give me more pleasure for that area to just not exist and this was easy mode for Christ's sake Okay, this was me playing this back in the day on easy mode when I first got the game Like I'm pretty sure the US version of this game which I, I got for the PS4 by the way uh, Because I didn't even realize they were they were pulling these games over in the UK until much later I bought the US version later on and it didn't have easy mode the UK version had easy mode And it got rid of three areas in the castle the, the, the maze the clock tower and uh, one of the holy grail with the, with the knights in that uh the parasites in the night suits they got rid of those free areas in the easy mode version of the game here in the uk but yeah um maybe, maybe you know i hate that area I, re I really bloody do i don't want it so i'm hoping that area gets cut and you just you just go straight to the main entrance so from the main entrance ashley gets obviously she gets captured again and she goes through the revolving door and i think it's very very repetitive i would i would i know i know they want they wanted to give us areas where leon is mostly by himself and that but uh at this point, I'm thinking they, they should really just sort of stick to developing Ashley's character alongside Leon. And obviously, it'll be it'll be a very, it'll be basically be sort of like a, it'll be like Ico, what do you call those games where you're just sort of protecting, like an escort game basically, yeah, but they can do, they can try and make Ashley a bit more better, like, so she starts off with a handgun, and maybe as you progress through the game, she can use better uh, weapons, or maybe you can upgrade the, the handgun for her and make it more powerful, and, you know, she can help you in fights. 
But uh, yeah, Ashley's either gonna again get trapped or she's gonna accompany you. Uh, the sewer section with um, the the no vista doors or whatever, or the, or the invisible bugs. That's gonna be kept in. It's basically a jailhouse. Basically, when you go down, it, it's like cells, and you even find some memos from Lewis and some corpses. I'm thinking that entire area is gonna stick in there because it adds to the survival horror element. You're going down into these dark sewers, these creepy sewers, and there's enemies that are invisible that you can't see, except for you know occasionally the eyes will bright up and it's like ah there you are. Or you look at the floor and you can see the 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 water splashing and then it's like it's in front of you. Shoot it. So yeah, that's an area I think they're gonna keep. That's if they even keep those enemies, I think. But I think I think the sort of like the version of the liquor for, or are going to be the version of the liquor for Resident Evil 4 remake. So I'm thinking that area is going to be kept in. You go through all of that, you avoid the traps, and then you end up in you end up back in the main hall, basically where there's like a ceremony going on, like a ritual that you can you know try and interrupt, you know, try and kill all the enemies and get all the loot from them if you can, you know. If I think if you throw a grenade down there, but uh, yeah, I'm thinking they're going to keep that area in. Uh, which then uh, leads you to. I'm pretty sure there's other areas. I mean, uh, the list I'm reading here is very is very out of order. Um, there's, there's an air, there's an area I think where you I'm trying to remember. You go through a room, and there's a machine gun turret. There's a zealot using a machine gun, uh, which uh, again, it, it's just you running in a circle. Essentially, it starts up as a chase, and depending or not if you have a powerful weapon or like a very uh, I don't know, like the rocket launcher or a good sniper rifle, you can try and kill the dude before he gets to the turret. But you know, if he does, it's just you sort of just running around in a circle trying to avoid this dude. I think, um, I'm trying to remember what happens next, running for a circle trying to avoid this dude. When does the Garadol dude appear? Actually, I'm trying to remember, like, uh. You meet Salazar, Ashley gets captured, you go for the sewers, you come down, you get, blow them up, and then you continue on. And and you're trying to find the chess pieces, I think, if I remember. Not the chess, but the door pieces for the, for the mural, I think. Um, yeah. No, I think that happens after you get Ashley back. I think it happens afterwards. But either way, you end up in the turret room. And I think after the turret room, you you there's also an area where you end up in a cage. But no, you that's the second encounter. So I'm 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 very confused what area comes first and what com area comes after. But basically, the area where you fight the turret room for stars is that going to be kept or not? I think that will be cut as well because it's more of an action segment. So it really depends on how they want to balance this. If they're going to go for like total survival horror. Uh, I can see them cutting that area out, but if they're gonna try and balance it and, and keep and you know have a good level of horror and action, they might keep the turn section. But personally, I just kind of find it useless. It doesn't really add anything. You do, I think you do get like the the piece though from that room, but uh, is it necessary? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. But uh, I, I wouldn't, re I, I wouldn't be really disappointed if it if it goes. But uh, one of the areas I do think they're gonna keep is obviously the uh, prison area where the uh, blind Garado or Wolverine-like uh, you know monster is locked up. I'm thinking they're gonna keep that area, and they're gonna expand on it, and they're gonna make this sort of. They, I think the Garado will basically be sort of like the uh, liquor of this game because it's blind. You have to sort of walk slowly so it doesn't hear you. Um, and I think they're gonna expand this part where it sort of stalks you for this specific area I think so I'm thinking that area is going to be kept that area is definitely going to be kept I think and then uh, you know the death room where Lewis dies and you have to sort of a uh, sniper Ashley on the bars and you have to protect her maybe maybe they'll keep that gameplay element maybe you know to sort of give you this moment where you're sort of just using sniper fire to cover Ashley and then it will cut to Ashley investigating uh, this entire dark sort of area sh with, with uh, with these enemies and, and the knights obviously coming to life and trying to attack her and you have to do that you have to probably do the hardest puzzle in the game which is also one of the easiest puzzles depending on which piece you start off with first like if you move one of the pieces in in the right way then all you have to do is just sort of just go in a circle moving all the pieces around a circle until it matches up perfectly actually so it really depends on luck and how you do that puzzle because then you can do it in, in, in first try you can do that in, in like 10 seconds or you know you screw up and you're spending minutes on it. So uh, yeah, I, I might like that puzzle personally. So I'm hoping they keep that Ashley area, or they update it, or they expand on it. Uh, obviously, it's going to be expanded upon or changed upon the same way they did and they changed around Ada and Sherry's uh, campaign areas in in in, in Hurry to Remake. Um, moving on from that, 
Uh, obviously, I was going to say there's that area where, they, where you get trapped in a cage and then you have the Garado coming back in, you've got the enemies around. I'm thinking that area is probably going to be cut again, although, although expand on it and change it up a bit perhaps, but uh, yeah, I see that area getting cut. Definitely see that area getting cut. Uh, there's the room where you sort of have to raise the bridge. Uh, I think this is before you get to Lewis as well, and it's like the rocket launcher and the glass. I think that's going to be gone as well. Like They're going to try and move around things, because the castle for me, and honestly, is one of the longest and most unpaced very bad paced areas I think uh, so I'm hoping a lot of it goes and they change it up or they, re they replace it with something else the the open uh, the outdoor area with a free but a broken butterfly yeah I can see them keeping that obviously it's a nice sort of transition area uh, the garden maze is definitely gonna be kept in because it's one of the scarier areas in the game you're going through this maze and you've got these freaking dogs and like dogs chasing you so I'm, I'm thinking that's gonna stay definitely is gonna stay uh, the dining room where you shoot the uh, bowl in the painting uh, it's a transition area I guess it's gonna stay obviously so that's gonna be in there um, trying to remember the dragon room so there's there's this entire room that basically feels like it's straight out of Dark Souls or something uh, where they're not having demon souls, well, but basically you're traveling through this volcanic area, and you've got like uh, the uh, the zealots or whatever, and these dragon devices breathing fire on you, and you got the circle. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that area is either gonna get cut, or, and I'm personally hoping it gets expanded on. Maybe they go into a bit more detail. Maybe like maybe it takes place in an underground section of the castle, and that, that explains all the freaking molten lava and that. So that'll be kind of cool. Maybe maybe they even give us a unique boss enemy to fight in that area because I feel like that should have had a boss. I mean, you got you got freaking dragon flame for us, whatever. Like maybe throw some some kind of unique enemy in there into that environment, maybe. But yeah, I'm thinking that part's gonna get expanded. And then uh, there's the there's the King Grail room with the knights, you know, with the parasites infecting the knights. I think that will be kept in because I think uh, that was a pretty interesting uh, area where you're just fighting these enemies and all in knight armor. Um, and then you've got the uh, what was it? What's the next part? Uh, the the Queen's Grail room, you know, where where, where Salazar traps you and the, you know the spikes come from the ceiling and you have to shoot the ceiling. And then you go through the next part, and then you've got the digger. You know, this is on the digger thing, and you have to save Ashley, you have to snipe them, get out of the room. So I'm thinking that area is probably going to be in there as well. But again, it's going to be expanded, maybe turn into a chase sequence as well, perhaps. Um, um, moving on, uh, I think at some point Ashley gets kept now because you go into the Nisvada nest, I think. You know, you've got the whole nest area, and they come in, and they fly off with her. So they fly over and then maybe maybe they can add a new enemy type or a new boss in an area where you have to fight maybe the queen or something. Because it's kind of weird that you've got this entire nest, right, that you can even shoot off and destroy and you get like the uh, eye pieces and that. Or maybe, but maybe they can use that to add a new enemy in there. But like, then they're, far, they're not far the queen or something perhaps. Maybe, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a food for thought. It's something to think about. But after that area, you get to the clock tower. Uh, again, like just like an easy mode in the UK version, that that could be cut really, and it wouldn't do anything because you're just sort of going in a room and you're going up and you're shooting these little things from the clock tower. I'm thinking that will be cut. They'll keep the clock tower, I think, as sort of like a uh, just like RE3. They'll just sort of keep it in the background there. You won't enter it. And then you get into the room with Sadler and the two Gyarados. I'm thinking the Gyarados enemy might be a one-off, and, and this is the same with El Giganto. There are. These are enemies that you encounter multiple times in the original game, but it, the the encounters are actually very few in between. There's like there's like four of these enemies in total. You've got like four El Gigantos and you've got like four Gyarados, uh, you know, and you you fight them the first time and then you can fight them a second time and then the third time you know the third area you enter them with there's like two versions of them. I'm thinking they'll just get rid of that maybe like. Uh, I think once or twice is enough, so it really depends, it really depends. Either way, you get to the room where Salazar is and he ends up trapping you. He, throws you, he throws you down into a hall. And this is pretty much the end of the map as well. You've gotten to this point in the castle where you're like, okay, we're done, we've gotten to the end of the castle, but then no, it keeps on going. Oh boy, does it keep on going. Like and subscribe, guys, yeah, please. <laughs> so this is, the, this is like the halfway point of the uh, castle section. At this point, Salazar sends his right hand to dispose of you. So you're in these tunnels, you're getting chased by Vertigo, who I think will be the stalker enemy of the castle area. So this is the point where maybe the, 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 the fight sort of comes to an end, you lure him, 
you knock him into the room with the coolants and then you, you destroy him using it or you blow him up or maybe expand on it and then you turn it into like a furnace. Maybe, I don't know, but um, that, that entire area I can see sticking. And then I think after that area you take like an elevator and then you go to... I'm trying to remember what the, what the next area is. It's like the underground mines, a thing where the fossils are. That's going to be kept in because it, it's, it adds elements to the lore. But I'm hoping they add more to it. They expand a bit more to it with the lore of the fossils and that. So you kind of go through that area. You have to use dynamite, I think, to blow the rock off. And then you go through to the next area, which is like... Um, I think it's either I think I think it's the it's the Nosfada caves. I could be wrong. You go through the Nosfada caves, and then uh, you're fighting just a whole bunch of Nosfadas, and you're trying to get the light thing moving. I think that's another area that could be expanded on potentially. They might cut that area out because again, you you already sort of face these enemies in the sewers, uh, and then maybe the nest. But I think it's like the final, it's like the third and final area where you fight these guys. So they might just keep it. Uh, and then moving on as it were as you keep on moving on you get to the El Giganto area you know you've got like the molten pool in the middle and then you've got two El Gigantos I'm thinking they might combine that area with the dragon room actually so I'll throw both of those areas together because it's they both deal with like magma and fire so this way maybe it doesn't become too repetitive like you know you, in, you go from there and you end up in here and it's like uh, uh, you do get a very unique death animation if you get too close to the pool of lava because one of them if you throw one of the El Gigantos in it'll like pop out like crazy grab you and pull you in so I, w I would like to see that remade but I, again that's an area I can see them cutting actually so that could potentially get cut that's an area that could definitely get cut along with the Nespada cave or maybe it's just changed around or swapped around or maybe only one of those areas is kept again depends on how they want to do this and then after that area I'm trying to remember what happens next uh, I think you go through a gold card like uh, I think you end up outside and once you're outside, you're in this area of the, of the Ganados and you kill them and then you have to like find the missing key. So you go down into like uh, the tunnels. And again, it's like the survey, the fossil area again. It's more of that and Dr. Salvador's there and the minecart is there. I can see that whole area getting cut um, or being moved somewhat. I, I, I don't know. I don't think they would keep that entire cart chase. Maybe they might keep it. It depends. But... Uh, uh, again pacing issues so I can see that entire area getting cut because it's too action-packed It's not survival horror anymore. It's like it's like an it's basically Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom at this point It's like we really don't need that in there So I can see that getting cut that entire sort of underground tunnel getting cut And then you're moving on into the statue room in your OG game the statue I can see getting cut or I can see them doing something different with it where maybe Salazar infects himself and then he becomes the core for the statue, for his own life-size statue. And then you end up having to fight the statue. So instead of this being sort of like a scripted event, like in the original game, this actually ends up becoming a boss fight where you're taking on this giant statue version of Salazar and you're trying to, you know, kill Salazar from where, what part of the body he's in. Like he's the weak point, like he's the one controlling the statue, so you're trying to kill him. And that could be the actual boss fight with Salazar instead. I can see them doing that actually. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be funny. It'll be, it'll be like a Gravity Falls when Little Gil as that final statue of himself in like the final, in one of the final episodes of season one, I think. So maybe they'll do something like that. Little guy to a giant robot. I can see them doing that. I can easily see them doing that. I can easily see that being a boss fight now instead of just sort of like, oh yeah. And I'm thinking that's good. that 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 entire fight with like a giant uh, statue of him might actually sort of be done in in towards the end of the castle section where you have to sort of go up go up the tower so i'm thinking that entire tower section will be kept you're going up the tower and then salazar you know you save ashley from salazar this time she doesn't get taken away you actually save her and then he goes in the car into the castle and it's like you know into the statue and it's like ah and you have to fight the statue and maybe Ashley helps up in some way and then yeah boom you defeat Salazar and then you get the whole story moment where it's like we have a choice do we go or leave now you know he contacts Hunnigan he can call her from because he's all the way up there maybe maybe his radio works now don't know or you know they go to the island and in this case it's like we're going to the island so it's like okay cool and that leads to the uh, third you know final part of the game right so what's going to be kept from there And yeah, on to the island, the final part of the game. God, God, this video is going to be long, isn't it? It's so tiring, but uh, it's interesting to talk about what could be kept and cut in that. Uh, from what I've talked about, it doesn't seem like a lot is going to be changed around a cut, maybe, but 
again be be prepared for disappointment guys not everything is going to be kept and be the same but yeah again like and subscribe i know it's repetitive but you know do, do me a favor guys do me a solid and do that and yeah we get to the island area so it's big end depending on whether ashley gets captured or not uh, i can see them changing this part up where maybe you, you actually get to a dock perhaps and then you know maybe you you, you sneak your way in maybe you aid us help and yeah i don't know i feel like they might change or cut this entire area up because it's just like this big military presence in it like at this point the game does straight up turn into an action game and i feel like they might want to keep the horror elements so i don't know like uh, i can see this area being cut like they change it up a bit and they make it more scary perhaps and you get into the facility eventually you know you do that laser puzzle maybe that gets cut and they change it with something else like get key cards or whatever like and, and you need to double swipe and get through and you get through because they're again depending on how they change the plot you're either going there to rescue ashley or you're going there to find the cure so you know food for fall and what they're going to do so you go through those areas which i think will get changed around um you know when you throw that when you have to throw like a grenade or shoot one of the dynamites with the enemies as the shot is going down and up i think that will be changed up a bit uh, they'll definitely expand on this entire section with the regenerators. I think this entire, once you get into the facility, it's all going to be changed around. Uh, they'll most definitely keep the part, I think, with the, with the, with the Ganado uh, in the uh, Ferna, in the, in, in the microwave, for, uh, uh, whatever. Like, you know, when, when, it, when, the, when the containment breaks up and he rushes out, I think they'll keep that. Or maybe they'll do a, do a different alternate version of it and give an explanation for what the hell that was all about. And then obviously you fight the regenerators, I think, which they'll expand upon uh, uh, with bigger elements of the story, I think. Uh, you get through that area, you get the entire communication section where Leon calls for help. Again, that's an area you can actually skip. You don't even have to go there and, and get that cutscene. You could skip that area, actually. But I see them keeping that and maybe changing up a bit where maybe you're forced to fight an enemy, perhaps, in that Pacific area. And after that, uh, after you've saved Ashley from the OG, they end up uh, going to the uh, waste disposal, the dump area, and they jump down into the dump. And again, more Iron Maidens or Regenerators, and you're trying to escape from them, which then leads... I'm trying to remember that. I think that eventually leads into a room where you have to... You have to I think at, at first, elite, you, you escape that area. I'm trying to remember, like, because again... And then it leads to this, I think, this tunnel where no it, it leads into a room where you have to use like a wrecking ball to break the side of the wall to get through which again i think that's an area that will be cut because it made no logical sense story wise i mean why was that pacific area that you need to progress for blocked off with wall it's like it's it's like the enemies were going from a different direction perhaps i don't know but i feel like that that part of the game will be cut and maybe they'll they'll change up a bit where you're getting stalked by the regenerators at this point you have actually in, in this dark sort of garbage area and you're trying to get through and you get in and you go through the tunnels and the tunnels will eventually you know you have to have actually climb under and open the door from the other side it'll change up a bit where you then end up um, in the truck area the truck area i can see them keeping i think uh, if, they, if they keep the truck, most likely they'll keep the minecart. But uh, I, I think this is one of those parts that they'll keep. You go through the truck, and you're trying to escape. Uh, maybe you're getting chased by ve uh, enemies on vehicles. Maybe, or again, maybe it's just like it is in the original game. And it's just a horde. You know, you're shooting all the enemies, and you're trying to get them off Ashley. And then eventually you crash, and then you encounter Sadler. And then Sadler takes control of Ashley and takes her away. Which then leads to the next, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think this leads to the next part of the, uh, hmm. I'm trying to remember where that leads to. I think that, le that leads into the uh, the pipe area. It leads you to that area where you first encounter Cow Krauser. So I'm thinking, and that's another thing, we don't know if quick time events are in this game. I'm personally hoping they are, and I'm hoping they're done just like they were in the original RE4, because I did like those quick time events. I think we all liked them and, and liked missing, you know, or purposely scare, you know, not uh, hitting the right combination and then, and then getting the death uh, animations. I think that would be cool to keep in. So I'm hoping that's in, and I'm thinking the knife fight with Krauser will be in. Maybe, maybe this entire area will be a cutscene now, maybe they'll turn it in and it won't be like a quick time event fight or it will be or maybe they change it up enough a bit where like um, it's just you and Krauser talking while you're sort of staring each other down and, and then he leaves or they turn it into an actual boss fight in, in this part of the game and you fight Krauser more than once so after this area you end up in the uh, throne room 
which is just sort of there. You can sit down in the chair and look all cool. And then it, like, in the back, that leads you into the laser room. I can see them keeping the laser room because I feel like it's an iconic part of the original RE4. Plus, it was sort of like a callback and homage to the laser room in the original Resident Evil movie. So I can sort of see them keeping that in, definitely. Uh, when you get through that area, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to run away. Uh, yep, laser room. So, and then I think off the laser room, you end, you end up in a cave uh, where the U3 actually shows up. Uh, so yeah, I think it is going to be in there. So if Krauser, and this is another thing, this, this is related to the stalker enemy. If Krauser doesn't, isn't in this game, or if he is and he isn't the uh, stalker enemy of the game, I can see them uh, changing up and having U3 be the stalker enemy. Of course, you're going to be like, well, he's a bit too big. How can he be the stalker enemy? Easy. You just, you just have him start off with a humanoid form chasing you. And then when you get to his boss render, he mutates into that, that four-legged creature with the, the big giant, like the giant claw or mouth, or whatever, and the, from coming out of his back. So yeah, that area is definitely going to be kept in, I think, along with the boss, but it's probably going to be updated or expanded upon. After that area, you end up in the um, boss arena with Krauser, which again, if Krauser hasn't been cut, and from if you read Dos Golem's tweets, he's saying that Krauser hasn't been cut, he's in there. So they most likely keep that entire part of the game where you're fighting Krauser with the knife and you're escaping him and you have to get to collect the three pieces, and then you get the timeline, uh, which is which feels like it's one of the more traditional boss fights actually in the game. Uh, like that feels that actually felt seriously that fight with Krauser felt more like a traditional final boss than the actual fight with Sadler at the end because it, it you know it feels like Krauser has a history with Leon. He he feels like he's a tyrant. You got the timer on, so I, I'm, I'm thinking it's I'm thinking it's similar to that. So I'm thinking they'll definitely keep that in. Or maybe they'll change it around where you, you fight Krauser a second time there and he escapes and then you fight him as the final boss at the end of the game perhaps, maybe, don't know, that's another thing to consider then when we sort of change it up a bit where Krauser ends up being the final boss. Oh hell, we get lucky and they throw Wesker in and he shows up at the very end of the game, he kicks Ada's ass and then you fight him as Leon and then Ada comes in to help to get a revenge and you beat Wesker but he escapes still with the sample and then you know you have to escape the island, boom. Uh, again, hoping that Wesker shows up with a bigger role in this game. Fingers crossed. But since they caught Barry from uh, the RE3 remake and he was just a cameo, I can see them doing the same with Wesker, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to believe anymore, guys. I don't know what to believe. But uh, either way, the, the Krauser area is either going to be changed around or he's going to be cut from the game or he's going to end up being the actual final boss and they're going to move him to like the construction fight, maybe. Perhaps. I don't know. But uh, I'm hoping that area is kept. After that, you end up in the area where Leon tries to choke or nearly chokes Ada to death and she kicks him in the shins. And then it's like, a, it's, it's basically this, this abandoned prison. You've got that thing in the trash bag. You've got that one regenerator in there. Um, again, I'm thinking they're either going to keep that and, and have more enemies in there or they're going to expand on the lore of what this place is and maybe actually explain for once what was in that trash bag. Personally, I think it was children. I think they, they fed all the children personally to the regenerators and the ganados so maybe they'll keep that part maybe they won't uh, sounds a bit too extreme if you know but oh who knows um and then the area after that is the entire section with mike where he shows up in the helicopter and it's basically freaking rambo at this point and um, i can see them cutting that area out because again it's over long it's it's paced badly i think like it comes from from just having f you know going through you free krauser and then that like it's a bit too much it's way too overwhelming but if they do end up keeping it, I'm hoping it's it's they change it up enough where it's you as Leon and Ada working together to escape that onslaught and you're just sort of going through all of this carnage together maybe. But at the same time, I just can't see them keeping it really. Like again, again, it depends on the tone they want to do. Do they want to go full on horror, in which case that's definitely going, or do they want to go, do they want to balance it and have horror and action, in which case that might stay. So there's that one. And then the final areas are basically the one where you find the uh, the machine device. You know, you go through, you go through the area, and it's it's the area where like Ashley is in, is in the cryogen, and then uh, you free her, and then and then Sadler shows up, and then Ada shows up. So they never really explained why that cryogenic thing was for. So maybe they can expand on that personally, and then obviously you escape it, and then you're going through, you're going through sort of around the area, the corridors, and you end up finding the uh, machine that can take the Lost Plagas out or eradicate it. Now, I'm kind of hoping that when you get to that point in the game where you have to uh, cure yourself, I'm hoping they do it similar to Dead Space 2 with the needle in the eye and actually have you control the machine 
right? And you have to cure Ashley and yourself from it. So basically you're playing both characters. So you're playing Leon, curing Ashley, and then you're playing Ashley, curing, curing Leon. And it's not just a cutscene. And I'm hoping they give you this sort of a choice of performing the procedure. But if you do it wrong, you end up like uh, burning or uh, dissolving Leon's organs or Ashley's organs. And they just die in like a mess of fly, fire or whatever, screaming to death. So I, I don't know, that would be kind of rad to see actually, depending on how it's done. But I would like to see them do that. Uh, it just feels more personal and interactive if they do and they allow it. But after that area, you end up outside the construction site, which whatever that was for, God knows. Where you meet the merchant for the last time. Uh, again, I'm hoping they maybe change it up a bit where maybe the merchant is feels like an actual character and he reveals himself, you know, you finally see his face. Or maybe he becomes a boss and you have to fight him, or he's an optional boss that you can fight or kill. But either way, yeah, I can see them keeping, or they can, or they're gonna change around the entire construction thing up a bit. Um, and yeah, you fight Sadler, or maybe they, they, or maybe Sadler gets killed, and you end up fighting Krauser or Wesco instead, and then you and Ada have to sort of team up and take care of him, and bada bing, bada boom, and then it ends with you and Ashley escaping the countdown and escaping in a jet ski, which I think will be kept in because that was again that was one of the more iconic moments in the original Ori Four, so I can see them keeping that part in. But yeah, that seems to be it. That seems to be everything so yeah at least it's done guys i went i went for it all i went for all the areas that can potentially be kept or cut yeah that was pretty long <laughs> but yeah uh and that's kind of see that's kind of see uh, what i see can happen I, those are the areas i think they will cut uh it does again it doesn't seem like it's a lot it's just most of the areas i think in the castle are going to get trimmed down and changed around to give it more of a gothic sort of horror vibe the island, I think, in terms of action, will be slimmed down and go for more of a horror approach, and then maybe drum up the action segments towards the very end. Maybe, maybe pull off, maybe pull off an Uncharted one where it's where it's the majority of it is an action game, and then you get to like the, the five last chapters, and it, and it turns into a horror game. Perhaps so maybe they can do something like that. Maybe like, but a reversal where it's like it's horror, 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 horror and then you get to towards the end, and it's like action, action, and then that's it. It's done. But yeah, uh, curious to see how they do this, curious to see what what's going to be kept in, curious to see how they do the story. I'm really hoping they do those story limits where Sadler doesn't tell the truth like an idiot and that the uh, uh, you know that Leon and Ashley find out themselves all the cause of the game and then they have that choice of whether they want to go and get cured or go back home uh, and leave it there. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping that they do. With Krauser, like I've said, I'm hoping they make him sort of like an agent to Leon that accompanies him. And then he's revealed that as the traitor. Otherwise, I don't know. They have to maybe do something where they reveal his character early on. Otherwise, he just comes out of nowhere. Like he's so pointless if they just sort of do what they did with the original, have him come out of nowhere. And with Ada and Leon, I'm I'm hoping that Leon, you know, it, that he hasn't seen Ada or heard from her in years, and that when he sees her in Ori Four, it's going to be for the first time, and it's going to be a shock for him when he's like, "Oh my God, you're alive!" Like I what happened and maybe get a flashback maybe to Ada surviving like explaining how she survived the events of Ari 2 and then she, you know explaining that she's been working for Wesker during that time period as well so that would be kind of cool it would be cool to see that but yeah those are my thoughts that's my video I hope you guys liked it as always remember to like and subscribe I know it's getting annoying and repetitive but it helps helps me and my channel so please do so and yeah guys, tell me your thoughts down below. Sorry if I'm going a bit woozy here, like I'm uh, taking my uh, sleeping uh, tablets and I'm like, I'm, I'm starting to drift off into space now, like, like I'm seeing double now at this point, which is not good. Uh, but yeah guys, uh, please do that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to try and do more of these if I can before Ori 4 comes out, because uh, I like doing these uh, every time an Ori game comes out, always about to come out. And yeah, uh, let's, let's hope for the future. Let's hope that... Uh, Fingers crossed that RE4 Remake does a much better job doing, you know, what a remake should do compared to what RE2 and RE3 especially did. And expand on things and cut some of the stuff that doesn't need to be there. Give us more puzzles, hopefully, and more story elements and just make the story tire and make more sense. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. But yeah, tell me what you guys think. Overall, that's it. That's my video. Hope you liked it. And remember, as always, I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and...